Falcon fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome into Atlanta Falcons today. We've got a mailbag video coming up later on this week, and so I know a lot of you guys wonder where I take my questions from. Go down below right now, use the hashtag Falcons, get your question in on the show, but you got to make sure you're subscribed. So also subscribe while you're down there, hit that red button. We're trying to grow the fastest and best Falcons channel here on the platform. So go down below, subscribe, and also ask your question in the comments section. All right, let's jump in the latest Atlanta Falcons news and rumors here on a Monday. We have a lot going on from the weekend, and we will start with the uh, the story you probably have seen but don't know a lot about, and we'll break it all down for you. The Barkevious Mingo, um, really, it's been, a, it's, it's been a crazy past couple of days, and so we got to update you on everything that's happened in terms of Barkevious Mingo. First off, we got to remember, when they signed Mingo in the offseason, it'd be kind of a backup pass rusher, not a lot of coverage there because he has not been that good the past couple of seasons. But over the weekend, he was charged with indecency with a child slash sexual contact, and so that is happening in Texas, and so he was arrested, and then he posted about a $20,000 to $25,000 bond and was released from prison pending a court date. Mingo's agent has denied the accusations wholeheartedly and called out the Falcons for cutting him because Atlanta saw this all going down. They put out a statement, and they just went ahead and cut and got rid of Barkevious Mingo and voided his contract, meaning the money comes back to Atlanta to add a little bit of extra uh, millions of dollars to the current Falcons cap space. We'll start with Chad Lewis, who is Mingo's agent. This is all via Adam Schefter. Uh, it's a long quote. We'll throw it up on your screen right now. Let's just dive right into it. Here's what he said uh, following the cutting by the Atlanta Falcons. Quote, we're extremely disappointing. The Atlanta Falcons rushed to judgment in terminating Barkevious's info, uh, Barkevious's info's contract for gathering all the relevant facts and my prior and and prior to my client having his day in court. The accusation against Barkevious Mingo is a lie. Barkevious knows it. So does his accuser. Mr. Mingo appreciates the law enforcement officers having a tough job to do, and he's in full committed to and he's and he is full committed to cooperating with the authorities to clear his name. As soon as Bar, as soon as Barkevious became aware of the arrest warrant, he immediately traveled to Texas to turn himself in and answer to the charge. Now he is ready to prove his innocence. Mr. Mingo understands the series of his accusations like this and the immediate negative impact it can have on a person's reputation, even where uh, is zero evidence. But he also knows uh, that he will be fully vindicated and the truth will come to light. When that happens, the true motivation of the accuser will be clear and ambiguous, end quote. So that is the official statement there uh, by Mingo's agent. And again, just because the agent says something doesn't make it true or false, right? We're not going to come here on the channel and decide whether he's innocent or guilty. If you want more details on the uh, whole incident, you can Google it and find out. It's some pretty rough stuff. Let's just say that. And it's very clear why he was arrested on these sort of things. But again, that's all going to be left up to the courts. We leave it at that. From an on-the-field football standpoint, the focus here of this channel, it's not a big loss for the Falcons, right? As you currently sit there, Mingo didn't do much. He played in 16 games last season. He started in three of them, had two and a half sacks, three five tackles, and five quarterback hits. This is not any sort of, you know, oh my gosh, Falcons just got way worse due to this whole uh, arresting of a star pass rusher. Not that it's necessarily the case. It's a terrible headline from an on-the-field standpoint. Again, off the football field, different story. On the field standline, uh, standpoint, it's a headline, it's a cutting, and it's not a big loss overall for the Atlanta Falcons. The real question I have is, will the Falcons try and replace him? Like, will the Falcons replace Mingo? And we talked a lot about, about bringing in pass rushers or linebackers in the past that Atlanta could go ahead and look to bolster what already is a very weak pass rush core. And I think that as it stands, they should look to go ahead and sign somebody because they get a little extra money back from Mingo. They didn't sign him to a massive contract, a couple million dollars here and there in terms of back onto their already $8 million in cap space. But I do think that right now they should look to at least, I think, try to improve. Now, again... I can't sit here and say, oh my gosh, Mingo is not a big loss, like whatever, and then also go, but they need to replace him. I think that, that even with Mingo on the football team prior to this week, they still need to go out and add some more pass rushers outside linebackers in order to go ahead and get to the passer. And so this to me is just a a, a possible excuse, I would say, from an on-the-field standpoint to go ahead and find another pass rusher. Maybe Justin Houston could go ahead and come in there. Maybe even a Melvin Ingram. We talked about those players before. But I think in the end, the importance of this first segment on the show today is just to fully explain where we are at in the Mingo situation. He has been cut. His, uh, his um, I guess his lawyer, but also I would say his agent is saying that he is innocent. And now it will be up to the court system, as we all know, innocent until proven guilty. But he will, of course, uh, have a hearing and there'll be an investigation and all that stuff will happen off the football field. But as it's stands on the football field. Mingo is no longer a Falcon, and the Falcons now have a little bit extra money and a roster spot to fill if they want to. Will the Falcons add another pass rusher? That's the real question here right now. If you think they will, type Y down below for yes. If you think that they will not, go ahead and type N down below for no.
All right, before we go ahead and keep going here, quick shout out to Kyle Pitts getting ready for his very first training camp in the ATL at Flowery Branch. And you can go ahead and pick up the official jersey he will be wearing week one of the NFL season and every game after that at chessports.com forward slash Pitts. We've been selling this jersey, uh, the link to, to the jersey the past couple of weeks, really since the draft. It's been selling like hotcakes. Comes in all the different sizes, men's, women's, uh, and also kids and the colors as well. So go ahead and pick one up. The link will be down below me in the description box right now. Chessports.com forward slash Pitts. This is going to be the hottest jersey you see in Mercedes-Benz Stadium this year. And so why don't you join the pack and pick up the fast-selling Pitts jersey right now. All right, let's dive into another story here on the channel today in our Falcons news and rumor video. And that is the fact that Pro Football Focus um, likes Atlanta, maybe? Okay, so there's a Pro Football Focus article uh, that basically talks about the best and worst case scenarios of each NFL team for the start of the 2021 NFL season. Here we are, middle of July, and national you know, news sources like Pro Football Focus need uh, content, and so they do the best and worst case scenario. We talk about this every single year. And so the best case scenario, according to Pro Football Focus for the Falcons, is 12-5, and five, which would be like, oh my gosh, that's a pretty darn good season. Obviously the best case scenario. The worst case scenario, here's the interesting part, the worst case scenario is only 6-11. and 11. So you go, that's that's bad. Like 6-11 is a losing year, but it's better than the four-win football team we saw on the field last year. And so worst case is six, is six uh, wins. Best case is 12. What's the middle there? Eight to nine, and that could be a playoff spot. So very interesting stuff here. We'll start with the best case scenario. Here is PFF's write-up on the best case scenario. If everything goes correctly, this will happen. Quote, the offense is one of the best in the NFL, even after the Jones trade. Arthur Smith's scheme, which helped lead the Tennessee Titans to a fourth-place finish in EPA uh, per play over the last two seasons, draws the best out of Matt Ryan. Kyle Pitts quickly finds himself in the upper tier of tight ends as a rookie, capable of winning as a receiver in line from the slot and at wideout. And Kevin Ridley steps forward as a true number one option, as he did when Julio Jones missed time in 2020. Ridley's 2.44 uh, receiving yards per route last year was uh, over a half yard more than his previous career high. End quote. Pretty good stuff. Now, let's switch over here to the PFF Falcons' worst case scenario. Here's what if everything goes wrong, this will happen. Quote, one of the worst defenses in the league, on paper, has no tricks up its sleeve. Lonnie Fowler Jr. and Marlon Davidson don't add much of a spark on the defensive front, leaving Gray Jarrett as a one-man army uh, uh, once again. Jarrett's 57 pressures in 2020 more than double any other defender on the team. Disappointing play from Atlanta's recent investments in the corner position, Isaiah Oliver, Kendra Sheffield, and AJ Terrell only makes the lack of pass rush more apparent. End quote. There you go. That's best case, case scenario. That's worst case scenario. How about we just do this? Can the Falcons get to nine wins? Like, like 12 wins. We talk about 15 wins. We talk about over here at six wins, four wins, three wins. Just get to nine wins. A nine-win season is a successful first year for Arthur Smith as a rookie head coach, right? Very rarely do rookie head coaches go very far in uh, the postseason. And so just getting there to me should be the ultimate goal. And then anything can happen, right? If you're a nine-win football team, it means you're pretty darn good. Maybe you sneak in there as a seventh seed, a sixth seed, or maybe the fourth seed. You win the division, and then anything can happen, right? You're three to two wins away from a Super Bowl berth. And so I'm just sitting there going... Can you get to nine wins? Because the past three seasons, the answer has been no, right? Four and 12 last year, seven and nine 2019, seven and nine 2018. Really, the 2019 seven and nine was like a lucky seven and nine because they were very bad going into the first half of the season and then figured it out. And then finally, 10 and six, 11 and five uh, the previous two years before that in 2017 and 2016. But really, it's like, can you just at least get to seven? Or sorry, can you get to nine? Because anything less than nine is going to be a losing year and a disappointing year. Anything around nine is going to get you closer to potentially a playoff berth and relevance in December and January. And that's really what we want right now in the ATL. All right, how many wins will the Falcons have in 2021? I'll ask you guys this. What do you guys think? How many wins will they have in 2021? When you go down below and comment, I'm going to say, I'm thinking nine or 10. I'm sitting at the nine or 10 level. Are you guys feeling more confident than that? Less confident than that? Give me your total Falcons win total down below right now in the comment section because, I, listen, this team does have holes. And talk about the worst case scenario, the defense is looking pretty bad, especially the pass rush. I mean, they, that was covered. But Arthur Smith's offense can figure things out. And Matt Ryan rolls, and Kyle Pitts goes, and Calvin Ridley, like, not big ass there. I think that they can win at least nine games. Give me nine wins right now for my win total. I want your win total, though, down below in the comments section right now. All right, quickly jumping into the final story here. And we talked about this last week from a rumors standpoint, but now there's some actually hard news on the Falcons and Nikhil Harry. So Nikhil Harry asked for a trade last week. We talked about could the Falcons trade for him, although saying there's no real reporting behind it yet. Well, there's a report from NFL Rumors on Twitter who, you know, you can take what you want about it. The NFL Rums is what it's called. Twitter account is actually true or false, but they do a pretty good, darn good job and are accurate. Let's just say that. They have said the Falcons have called New England about possibly going ahead and getting uh, Nikhil Harry. And so as we currently stand, we can throw the tweet up on the screen right now and show you guys that uh, there is a chance that Nikhil Harry could become an Atlanta Falcon based on the current rumor that you're seeing. We'll throw it up on your screen right now. Here is what it says. Quote, 
The Atlanta Falcons have discussed options for a Patriots Nikhil Harry trade. Hashtag NFL, hashtag NFL rumors, hashtag rise up. Low risk, high reward, question mark. That is the question there. So they have discussed it. Now, does that mean that they are like, oh my gosh, New England, what do you want? Like, here's here it is. Or is it internally they go, do we want to take him or do we not want to go ahead and trade for him? I wouldn't sit here and freak out either way. And the Falcons should look at Harry. I, know, I think every single football team that needs a wide receiver should take a look at Nikhil Harry because the hope is there that you get what he was supposed to be versus what he became during his two seasons with New England Patriots. Because in New England, it's just been pretty bleak. It's been pretty bad. I mean, you look at the numbers. We talked about this last week. The guy has done nothing the first two seasons. And so that's very bad based on what he did during his time in college, especially in his final season in the college football. I mean, he was absolutely fantastic. And so I am all for going ahead and uh, uh, looking at Nikhil Harry. And I like the idea of, of adding Nikhil Harry because you don't know what Russell Gage is going to do. And plus, behind Russell Gage, you don't have a lot from a wide receiver standpoint. So we'll keep an eye on this. There's obviously no guarantee, but it at least is interesting that there are some reports that Atlanta is actually interested in making a trade from the former first-round draft pick uh, of the New England Patriots. All right, ultimate for today here on Atlanta Falcons Today. I'm your host, Thomas Mott. Make sure you guys are subscribed as usual, but also follow me on Twitter, at RealThomasMott is your place to go. If you have any questions, you can always DM me at RealThomasMott as well. I always answer those uh, pretty darn quickly. So again, that's have for today here on Atlanta Falcons Today. I'm your host, Thomas Mott. We go ahead and sign off. Stay safe out there. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day.